Hello everyone, welcome to episode 12. So this week I'll be talking about the selective laser melting. It is a powder bed fusion process. So it's 3D printing of metal. So let's begin. So let us begin with the aims and learning outcomes. So hopefully we will learn the process of selective laser melting and the advantages and disadvantages of this powder bed fusion method. Hopefully you'll be able to describe the process be able to state the advantages and disadvantages and lastly to know the applications of SLM process. So why am I so interested on the selective laser melting process? Because you can see here, courtesy from the University of Birmingham, they 3D printed a deer. You have a solid leg, so you can see it's a deer and then the body of the deer is in some kind of a mesh-like mesh -like geometry and the horns of the deer, the antlers of the deer, are in solid. So you can see that selective laser melting kind of method allows the creation of both dense material and less dense material all in one object. So this is quite interesting. So my next introductory picture that I want to show you is this object. This is by the courtesy of In Glass. So this is, this shows that the selective laser melting process is able to create internal cavities so this helps in like the cooling of of injection molded parts and it also allows the creation of very intricate geometry features that you can't really create in any other way so this is a very interesting benefit of selective laser melting so let's get into the process in the next slide so how does selective laser melting process work? Hopefully in this slide, you'll be able to understand how it works. So you can see that there is a laser that is used in this process. And this laser is shot onto a mirror assembly. So this mirror assembly is the scanning mirror mechanism that will reflect the laser beam onto a bit of powder. So this powder is usually metallic powder and this metallic powder is deposited by the wiper so there's a wiper that acts to flatten the powder on each layer and powder is also deposited down this wiper and after the end of every layer the z-axis can be moved downwards so eventually you'll form the part like other 3d printing process Taking a closer look at the process, you'll notice that this wiper will move front and back and as it moves front and back, powder will be deposited on the platform and excess powder will flow into the overfill chambers as you can see on the left and right hand side. This will be collected at the end of the print and recycled. So you can see that also that there is an inert gas flow that flows from the left side to the right side of the chamber. So this helps in the removal of the any gases that form due to this melting process. So it ensures that the surface of the building layer is as clean as possible. So hopefully with the previous two slides, you know the process of SLM now. So basically, you can s the whole summary of it is over here. So powder is first deposited down onto the powder bed and it is flattened. Next, a laser is shined to melt the new layer of powder so that the powder melts into a fully dense part. So there are two phenomenons that I want to highlight here in the selective laser melting process. Firstly is the it's very crucial for the powder to be able to flow nicely. If the powder doesn't flow nicely, then you wouldn't be able to create this perfectly flat layer. And if you can't, and, and if you can't create this perfectly flat layer, when the laser shines on it, right? So if the layer, some part is thicker and some part is thinner, then you'll cause some unevenness in the print job and that might be bad for the print job. Another phenomenon that you want to take note of in selective laser melting process is the reflectivity of the metal powder. So when the laser melts the metal powder, the 
the metal becomes in a melt, so it's in a liquid state. And when metal is in a liquid state, there's a very chance, there's a very good chance that the metal is very reflective because it's very shiny. And this shininess will reflect the laser beam energy away from the away from the metal itself. So you require a bit of a bit more energy to overcome this loss in reflection of their laser beam. So these are the two processes that I want to highlight in this method. So yeah. Let's go on to the advantages and disadvantages. So these are the advantages and disadvantages based on my experience on the selective laser melting process. So firstly, the advantages is that it can create nearly fully dense part metal parts in like 99.9 some percent of. And next, it can create complex geometries that you can't possibly create using a casting method or a machining method. And the next advantage of the SLM process is that a large of a large available a large library of materials is available to be used on the SLM process because it is very much similar to the SLS process just that now that the laser has a higher power to melt metal. Moving on to the disadvantages so the SLM process most likely require heat treatment to maximize the mechanical properties this is due to the build temperature of the SLM that is usually very low. So, so when the metal is melted at about 1000 degrees, it is rapidly cooled down to about maybe 200 to 300 degrees. This rapid cooling induces some stress onto the part which requires heat treatment to, add, to correct it. Next, the SLM process is also very expensive because the metal powder is quite expensive to create in such spherical form. And lastly, it's a pretty slow process because the laser beam has to individually move through the cross section. This is not like a whole area based exposure kind, such as like the DLP process. So, but as for it might be slow, you think, but as for a metal building process, it is actually pretty quick. But yeah. So one last disadvantage that I forgot to write in the PowerPoint is that another thing is that the support material in the SLM process is equivalent to the build material. So it is also difficult to remove the support material. Thus it's difficult to remove the support material because they are the same material and they tend to fuse quite well together. So the 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 way this method goes about solving this issue is that the process parameters for the support material is weak is weaker as compared to the built material so the support material the process parameter will be tuned in such a way that there is lots of pores there are, and that the the support structure is mechanically weak so it's a little easier for the user to take out the support materials so yeah let's move on to the applications now Move on to the applications now. So there's three applications that I want to tell you on aerospace, medical, and military. So for the applications in the aerospace sector, you can see that people are are substituting our conventional parts with additive manufacturing parts because the additive additive manufactured parts are safe in weight. So this helps the aerospace industry in saving fuel costs. So moving on to the medical applications, you can see that people are reconstructing bones with internal scaffolds. So what this does is that it allows people to create medical implants more accurately than before. So yeah. Lastly, whether we like it or not, there are military applications using metal 3D printing based methods such as the selective laser melting process. So it gives military the ability to create weapons out of metals from such machines. So yeah. So with, with that, we end the content of this episode. So let's move on to the summary. Basically, I hope you have a good brief overview on the SLM process and how it can aid your 
prototyping or manufacturing needs, whether it is in the aerospace, medical, or military applications, or maybe some other industries that you're in. Next, I hope you understand the advantages and disadvantages of the SLM process and also some applications on it. So yeah, so now we'll move on to the all-important reference. Once again, I have to thank all the references for their wonderful illustrations uh, or information because this video couldn't have been done without their illustrations. And I want to thank them one by one again. So here first is courtesy of the University of Birmingham. So they showed you the deer model and courtesy of Inglass. They showed you the internal cooling channel model that I showed you. Courtesy of fusion implants, they show you the 3D process of how SLM works. And courtesy of the golden progress, they showed you the 2D process of how the SLM works in more detail. So yeah, thank you. So next I would like to thank Proto Shape that shows you another summary of how the SLM works in which I explain the phenomenon that you can find in SLM process. Next courtesy of EADS innovation work so basically what they showed you was the air bus component that I told you so the aerospace part where people are turning conventional parts into more lightweight structure using additive manufacturing next we have courtesy of the engineer Muran Nizami sorry if I pronounced it wrongly so basically he had the illustrations of the bone implant with an internal scaffold structure so that aids the development of implants so yeah so last but not least I want to thank Solid Concept for the uh, illustration on the first 3D printed metal gun so yeah so I hope you enjoy episode 12 on the selective laser melting and stay tuned for the next episode that should be on electron beam melting Thank you once again and hope you enjoyed the episode.